Imagine that you wake up one morning, and there's absolutely nothing. You can only see a pitch black void surrounding you. There's no sound, not even the ringing of silence. You find that you can't call for help. No matter how hard you try to yell, you can't produce a single sound. You can't move or feel your body. You feel disoriented. It's like you're floating in space. You can't tell if you're right side up or upside down. And probably strangest of all, you realize that you can't even breathe. Fortunately, you remember watching a random YouTube video about this, and you come to the conclusion that your brain has been removed from your body, is being kept alive, and is able to function completely normally. This is why everything is blank. You have zero sensory input. You can't feel your body because there's no body for you to feel, and you can't tell if you're right side up or upside down because you don't have the semicircular canals in your ears to tell you how your head is rotated. Unfortunately, this knowledge doesn't provide any comfort. You realize that you are completely helpless, and that your existence right now is completely dependent on some unknown person taking care of you. But who is taking care of you? Why are they keeping you alive? And how did you end up like this? Did an evil scientist steal your brain in the middle of the night? Did you sign up for an experiment and have no memory of it? Were you in a severe car accident, and the only thing that could be saved was your brain? You start to wonder about your friends and family. Are they okay? Do they know you're like this? What's going to happen to you? So many questions and thoughts run through your head. And it seems like for now at least, you're not going to get any answers. No one seems to be trying to contact you. You are completely trapped inside your own mind, surrounded by nothingness. Will you be stuck here for months? Years? The rest of your life? You don't know. It seems like survival is something you don't need to worry about. So how will you keep from going insane? It's easy for people to go insane in space shuttles or solitary confinement. You are experiencing something much worse. Your senses are completely cut off. You have no way to interact with the world or people. You can't move. You can't eat. You have nothing to look forward to. How do you live like this and not go crazy? Well, that depends a bit on how you want to prepare. Do you think there's any chance that you'll get out of this situation? Is there any hope that you'll go back to your body and live the life that you had before? Or do you think that this is your life now, and that you need to accept it? Either way, the important thing is that you think intentionally. By this, I mean you need to use your imagination in productive ways. Your brain works on a use it or lose it principle. If you use a part of your brain more often, it gets stronger. And if you use a part of it less, it gets weaker. If you stop thinking and try to patiently wait for something to happen, then there's a good chance that your brain will turn into mush. You're not using it, so you're going to lose it. So use your imagination and keep your brain moving. Prison inmates have survived solitary confinement by imagining things for themselves to do in their minds. You could imagine yourself kicking a soccer ball into a wall. Then think about how you kicked the ball. How straight is the ball's path when you kicked it? Where did the ball go after it bounced off the wall? And how would you kick it better next time? Johnny Perez is an ex-inmate who spent three of his 13 years in prison in solitary confinement living 22 to 24 hours a day in a room where there's barely enough space to lay down. He says that one mental exercise he did a lot was to go back and look at conversations that he had in the past and imagine what might have happened if he had said or done something different. Mental exercises like these keep parts of your brain working. Imagining that you're kicking a soccer ball can help you work on your motor skills, even if you don't have a body. It activates the parts of your brain that control motor functions. Imagining that you're talking to people satisfies the parts of your brain that deal with human interactions. Imagining conversations with people, or even having an imaginary friend could help save your sanity. You won't feel as alone in this emptiness. And this is where your choice comes into effect. If you want to prepare for your brain being put back into your body and reconnecting with the world, you should try to keep your imagination somewhat grounded in reality. Make sure that you practice the skills you might need when you return to the world. Focus especially on your motor skills and using your five senses. On the other hand, if you choose to accept this as your fate, then maybe you'll want to create a less realistic reality. Create your own rules and make the most of your situation. Whatever you choose. Realism, fantasy, a balance of both, whatever. Just be sure to keep thinking to stay sane. But you also need to be careful with how you think. If you're not careful, uncontrolled or impulsive thinking can be both causative and symptomatic of mental illnesses. Thinking down these dark paths is dangerous, and it's easier to go further down these paths when you're in isolation and have more time to think about it. Don't let yourself think this way. Make an effort to stay away from those dark paths in your mind, or you could do some serious damage to yourself. So now you know that you need to think intentionally to keep your mind healthy and to keep from going insane. However, there are some limitations to your condition that you just can't overcome, and it's important for you to know what they are. 
This is really a disappointment if you're the type of person who likes to learn new things, because in this current state, you are unable to learn about the world. In complete isolation, you could learn new things about yourself, you can come up with new ideas, of course, and you could take the pieces of knowledge you already have to come up with new conclusions. But without a connection to the world, it's impossible to read, listen, or experiment to see what happens. Learning requires input from the world around you. If you are put in complete isolation and don't know anything about a certain subject, then you have no hope in learning about that subject. If a newborn baby's brain were removed from its body like this, then this brain would be unable to think because it isn't in a situation where it needs to learn and change. This brain can't learn about problem solving, cause and effect, how to feel, how to communicate, nor about any of the five senses. This little brain would stay a blank slate because your brain can never develop if it can never learn. And this complete isolation where survival is given without challenge prevents you from learning any new information. And what about your identity? Can you still be you if you're only a brain in complete isolation? If your brain were put into this jar as a baby, would you become the person you are right now? Aren't your likes and dislikes based on things you found in this world? Aren't your opinions based on your own unique experiences in this world? Haven't you been at least a little influenced by the people you've interacted with in your life? Take all that away, and who are you? Not a painting, but a blank canvas. But we're talking about a situation where you've had prior experience in this world. You may know who you are, or at least have an idea about it. But do you think you can grow in this isolation? If your brain were removed as a child, could you become an adult? If you're already an adult, could you grow further? I'm not saying it's impossible to change and grow on your own, but take it from me. It usually takes a push to get you in the right direction. And your brain is also going to be physically changing in this isolation. We already talked about use it or lose it. Your brain is going to take away whatever it thinks it doesn't need, and make room for what it thinks it does need. Your ability to use all five of your senses is going to weaken without you naturally using them on a daily basis. Even if you exercise those parts of your brain and try to imagine detailed sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste, it's not going to be as strong as the real thing. And your brain will deem those areas as less important and instead make more room for thinking and imagination, the activities your brain is going to be primarily doing. So with the combination of it being difficult to grow and your brain naturally reshaping to adjust to the complete isolation, are you still the same person that you were before your brain was removed from your body? Well, that's more of a personal question. It really depends on what you feel is important to you. If you feel like what you lose is more important to who you are, then maybe you can't be the same person. But if you feel like you're still you, even after all these changes, then maybe that's true. Now you know how to stay mentally healthy after losing your body, you understand the challenges you'll face in complete isolation, and we've covered the existential dread of your identity being only a brain in a jar. Now you just need to ask yourself one question. Do you really want to go back? Think about when you're in a dark room and the lights are suddenly turned on. Your eyes are irritated because they're not used to the sudden stimuli, the sudden change from complete darkness to bright light. Now what about your brain being in complete isolation? You get used to this. Your brain starts to rewire itself to adjust to this new environment. And let's say you were given an android body, and you're suddenly reconnected to the world. Now there's noises everywhere, there's bright lights, there's people surrounding you, everything is chaotic. There's sudden stimuli that your brain isn't used to, and that could be irritating to your brain. Your brain started to forget how to see in the isolation, and is having a little trouble processing the images you see. People left in isolation for long periods of time tend to become more introverted, and you'll probably feel at least a little uncomfortable socializing. You need to learn how to communicate and be social with real people again. You find that they can be a lot different than the imaginary friends you talk to. You probably also need to go through physical therapy because your motor skills have decreased. Even if your new android body is identical to the body you had before, you still need to relearn the motor skills you started to forget. Do you think you'd feel comfortable like this? Is this worth being back in the world? Or do you think you'd prefer being a brain in a jar? Just think about it.